My name is Heather Peart. I am the chair for the cardiology technology program at Anderson College. I have been in this profession for over 30 years. I started out in my career uh, very early as a cardiology technologist. I got into teaching, I've got into management, um, sales, all aspects of cardiology technology. Well, the students pretty well learn all aspects of cardiology. Uh, the biggest thing we focus on initially is um, anatomy and physiology, because you have to have an idea of what anatomy and all the systems of the body and how it relates to cardiology. And once we get into, as well as medical terminology, because there's a lot of medical terminology that's used in cardiology, and cardiology is a language, and because it's a language, uh, medical terminology is um, a major focus of it. Uh, once they get through all that, they're basically learning the fundamentals of cardiology. And the fundamentals of cardiology uh, sets them up to understand the pathology of cardiology. So they learn how to read ECGs. They learn how the cardiovascular system affects the rest of the body. Uh, they learn what can go wrong with the heart? What can go wrong with the conduction system? What is the normal conduction system? How does drugs affect uh, the conduction system? How does drugs affect the heart? Um, in regards to, for instance, the heart rate. Uh, you know, so they once they come out of the program, I always say to the students, now you can work on Gray's Anatomy. <laughs> because you, you will be that person on Grey's Anatomy talking about the ventricular tachycardia. And then, you know, you know what you're talking about. So now you're ready for Grey's Anatomy. Oh, the lab is the most fantastic part of our program because this is when they actually, all the academia that they've learned, they're now putting it to practice. So they initially start out with ECG. Um, and if they've never done an ECG before, they'll be excited. But, um, you know, after a little while, an ECG is an ECG, they get bored. Uh, once we start doing stress testing, the students are excited because, you know, this now is used in many parts of their brains. Uh, you know, they have to take blood pressure. They have to make sure they're monitoring the patient on the treadmill. They have to make sure that they're actually monitoring the monitor to make sure there is no arrhythmias. Uh, and as well, when we actually do stress testing, they start out initially with each other as their patient, but then we actually start doing simulation. And when we do simulation, uh, we have arrhythmias happening. So now everything that they've learned, it comes into play. So they're really excited about that, uh, as well as it can be quite stressful. You know, so I think they like the challenge of actually performing a stress test. Um, Holter monitoring or ambulatory monitoring is another great area that students love because uh, this is done at the end of the program and everything that they've learned so far in regards to detecting arrhythmias, so forth, so on, they have to put in place. So I think those probably are their favorite parts of the program is um, in the lab, stress testing and ablatory monitoring. Not a medical background per se, but we do have a, a lot of students who's had past medical background uh, and especially a lot of um, out-of-country doctors who have migrated here and want to get into a medical profession quite quickly. This is one avenue that they actually do take. We have students who have no medical background, so that's the other extreme, uh, that actually get into this program as well. Usually for the students, I, they actually have to go through an interview with the chair of the program, who's myself. So if I'm taking someone with no medical background, in regards to the whole psychology of that individual, I have to, within myself, know that this person can handle uh, the program because as I've said many times, uh, you know, it is a, quite a rigorous program, it's quite robust. Uh, so a lot of the times it's the individual who really wants this and you can usually, and who is willing to put in the work. So that's very important. It's not like I just wanna be a cardiology technologist. Are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to put in the study and um, the time to be a cardiology technologist? Because this is a frontline profession. So, you know, you have, to be able, you have to be passionate about it. And a lot of the times that's what I'm looking for is passion. Even for people who have all the background, do they have the passion to do this? In regards to job opportunity, uh, 
since I've started this program at Anderson, and to be completely honest with you, initially, I was a little bit worried because, you know, you start a program and it's just like, well, how long is it going to run before the students can't find jobs? We have been doing this now since 2015. I would, I would say 85, 90% of my students find jobs, okay? So, uh, full time. Uh, they find it in hospitals, they find it in cardiac clinics, um, sales, areas uh, like that in regards to cardiology. I am just impressed and it, it, it's probably uh, the times that we're in, there's a lot of cardiac jobs out there because I know maybe a decade or so ago, it wasn't like that. Um, when I work someplace else, a lot of students would finish the program and they can't find jobs. My students find jobs. Like, even when I have students in class, I have clinics calling, do you have any students? It's like, no, there's no students because they're in class at the moment. I do not have any students that can actually go out on a job. So there are so many job opportunities out there in regards to cardiology. That's all I can say. I don't know if it will ever dry up, okay, because I've been for years saying, hmm, you know, this is interesting in regards to the job. But students, they walk out, they have jobs.